Hey everybody! Hey everybody! Welcome to the Blue Ribbon Lounge hey. podcast. Here we are again. Again. Remember, you chose this. You downloaded it, and now you're listening to it. And we thank you so much. Every time. Yeah. I mean, mostly I do this so I can hang out with my pal Dave and uh, learn a little bit. But also, I hope you enjoy it too. Yeah. Maybe put a smile on your face. Yeah. And, and maybe for us, you could put a comment down below, wherever you're listening to this. Yes. Subscribe. Yeah. Smash that buzzer. Is that the thing that they do? I think maybe. Is there is there a buzzer? I don't know. Ring, I don't think ring the bell? Yeah, we're not even on YouTube, so it's no, not applicable. No, it's not the same thing at all. <laughs> so last podcast, we did Lopi's Pizza. We did do that. We found out that they do enjoy a nice cold Pabst Blue Ribbon. They do? Yes. yes. They wrote it on the box. I remember. Uh, today we are doing a coffee. Yes. Did we say why we were doing not beers? Uh, I don't think that we did. We did it because fucking Dave is no fun this month. Well. The, the recording month. The recording month. Yes. The past that is now your present. Yes. That is our future. <laughs> God. Time travel. Goddamn time travelers. <laughs> it always <laughs> just convolutes everything. Uh but yeah, Dave's not doing any uh, drinking this month. Nope. And how is that going for you, Dave? Uh, pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's never a bad idea to lay off a drinking or whatever your vices are. Yeah, take a break, let your liver heal. Yeah, livers or uh, lungs if you're a, if you're a smoker. Yeah, or kidneys. Veins if you're a... A shooter, a junkie, yeah. nose. If you're a snorter, a snorter. Yeah, just take a little bit of time off. Every yeah, once sometimes while. it's nice. Yeah. I think a lot of people do it in January. Oh, okay. Or um, for their, uh, they do the New Year's resolution, and then yeah. they're good for January. And then February is a bust. Right. Well, I think it's like dry January mm. is something, and there's also a sober October is oh, also yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a pretty popular one with. Uh, What's his name? Joseph Rogan. Yeah. Josephina Rogan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave, uh, I wanted to give you something. Oh. Why are you undoing your pants? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I got some new uh, stickers. Oh. Uh, those are available at uh, Abernathy's. Abernathy's? Yeah, so... Uh, this uh, skull that says Bonehead? Yeah. Awesome. And Elvis. Yeah. In lights, like in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, that's off of his, like, 1969 comeback. Oh, okay. It's like the cover art? Uh, it was the background of the show, I believe. Oh, I got it. Like, yeah. on stage? Yes. That's cool. Thank uh, you. Yeah, no problem. I always try to try to hook you up with the, the latest and greatest. And uh, if you want to support the podcast, go down to Abernathy's and, and grab some Blue Ribbon Lounge stickers or ask them what stickers Matt and Nikki brought in, and yes, uh, they'll buy, point you. Buy those. Yeah, that's always a great way to support lo- local business and small-time podcast. But yeah, that's how you can. That's one way to support the uh, podcast. What's, uh, what's a couple other ways to get a hold of us, Dave? Um, Blue Ribbon Lounge Moline at gmail.com. Hell yeah. Send us your questions, your comments, your concerns. Uh, show requests, breweries, show. Uh, topics. Yeah, we just got a bunch of breweries uh, told to us today uh, by somebody we saw. And uh, if we if we get one of those uh, soon, we'll give a special shout out. Yeah. Well, uh, we're always willing to give shout outs. Yeah. So we're always uh, willing to try to, you know, get your requests in there. Um. So today we're not doing any beers, no. but we do have this. It's uh, from Dead Poets Espresso. Yep, in Moline. In Moline, fabulous Moline, Illinois. Yeah, right next to uh, Bad Boys. Yeah, uh, on their little hand warmer thing, 1525 Third Avenue A, Moline, Illinois. Uh, they roast their own. Yes, the guy said that they roast their beans at their farm and then bring them to the store. And this is a uh, coffee of the month, which is um, caramel apple steamer. Yes. So mine has a – so I took my lid off. I hate hot coffees, Dave. I yeah. didn't tell you that when we were going to do this, and that's okay. I'm willing to sacrifice for the podcast. But it's a steamer, though. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that means. But. Uh, 
but mine's got a big rubbery thing on top. Oh, that's foam. It's a it's steam, so like steamed milk. Makes, oh, it's it's froth. I mean, it's heavy, boy. Yeah, it's a, he- <laughs> a heavy froth. Yeah, I'm more of a an iced uh, guy. I do. I when I when I go to Starbucks, I get like what is essentially I call an adult chocolate milk, which is a mocha drink on ice. Oh, okay. Uh, so this uh, is different. Yeah, there's that one at atomic my old lady gets all the time which is the white chocolate bliss okay which is pretty much like an adult chocolate milk also. <laughs> nice. yeah it's like a white white chocolate milk. yeah hell yeah. yeah it's bottoms up yeah so that didn't work with the lid on i it. told you the foam yeah it's very thick well that's interesting it's actually pretty good yeah but that foam is thick boy it is thick it's like mealy yeah it's like <laughs> james scooping it out with like a fork mm-hmm. it's very weird i mean it's not bad but i have no idea what that is i've never encountered that so maybe a steamer is different is not just like frothy coffee i don't know um Uh, I also got a scone. Yeah. I don't think they make their own scones, but it's not a bad scone. No, and I got myself a blueberry muffin, which is good. Uh, the guy said, yeah, they don't make their own scones, but they do bake them. So I, I think they come in frozen, mm. pop them in the oven for you. Yeah, which I'm fine with. Whatever. Yeah, this is a baked goods. Yeah. And, and they're a coffee shop. I mean, the co- I mean, in my opinion, for a hot coffee, this is actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's caramel apple Yeah. Kind of like a cider. Mm-hmm. It's like a cider with some milk in it or something. Um, So as far as coffee goes, I'd probably give this a four and a half out of ten. Four and a half. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to try their other stuff because mm-hmm. that froth or whatever that is on top was kind of odd but not bad tasting yeah no not at all they had a lot of crazy flavors the one i i sent my uh wife that they have a uh what was it caramel um pistachio oh the thoreau yes yes no that was the whitman that was the whitman yeah it was all the way at the bottom so it's the w okay thoreau was the blue beautiful blue italian or something like that i could see that yeah yeah um but yeah, they had all sorts of themes. The inside of the place was pretty nice, too. I mean, I could see going in there and having a coffee and shooting the breeze. Yeah, it's a nice atmosphere. You could probably yeah go there, read a book, read some poetry. Read some poetry. Yeah, and be they, a learned explorer of the world. They do sandwiches, too, but we didn't get a sandwich. No. My daughter went there, which is where I heard this about this from, and she said their breakfast sandwiches were pretty dope. Okay. As the young kids say. Yeah, I'll have to try that out next time we have a day off or something. Yeah. Or I guess maybe on a Saturday, even. Yes, even <laughs> on a Saturday. Uh, but that was the that was the appetizer. Yes, the Dead Poets Espresso. Is it because oh we God, have these cats food down it here? It must be. Yeah, it's almost like an oatmeal. Yeah, it's very interesting that part on top. But definitely would go there again. Honestly, I'd probably get this again. Oh, the apple cider steamer? Yeah. I always feel really bad being the uh, the guy that always gets the same thing everywhere. Uh, I mean, the same thing at a particular place or the same thing at different places? At different places. It's always... And, and I, I went through this period of time where I was like, I don't know what to order. And I was just like, an iced mocha latte. And uh, so now that that's all I say, I smoke a latte. Except when we go to Red Man, my wife said an Italian cold brew. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. That's not what I get. Right. And she was like, no, you'll be fine. And it was, and the Italian cold brew was fire. It was really, I was, I'm the Americano. Okay. Yeah. A little bit of ice. <laughs> Just because 
I guess drip coffee is actually has more caffeine in it. But if I'm going to a fancy place, I might as well get the espresso with the hot water for the Americano. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, I was so excited to try this drink, Dave. I didn't ask you how you been. Oh, um, been good. Anything going on? I uh, started doing some Christmas shopping. Oh, yeah? Yeah, topical. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd ask you what you're going to pick up, but this will come out before Christmas. Yeah. So, no spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> Although, does your kid listen to the podcast? I don't know. I've told her that we've had one, and I don't think that she's <laughs> listened to it. No, she definitely hasn't. Probably not. She doesn't take any of my advice. I'm like, here, listen to this uh, Ro- Rogaine Jogan. <laughs> Rogaine Jogan. And then I'll follow up, and she'll be like, oh, no, I didn't listen to that. <laughs> I'm like, why do I even bother? Yeah. I mean, what's the use of having all this knowledge and experience when your kids don't even listen to you? I know. It's almost like one of those things where when you text them or call them and they don't answer you back, it's like, why do you even have a phone? <laughs> <laughs> Every time uh, I I text my kid, I'm going to start saying, help, all caps. So yeah. he has to re- reply back <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> to start tricking him. Like, what's wrong? Nothing. Just see how you are. <laughs> the dad who cried sick. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been up to? Um, Let's see. Not a whole lot. I am looking forward to December 4th, although this podcast might be out by then, um, is a rap show I'm going to. Oh. I think I may prof? have said it before. Yeah, Prof. Yeah. Uh, pretty excited about that. That's getting here. That's cool. I just found out another rapper that I like. Uh, his name is Amine. He's going to be going on tour in 2022. That's next year. Yes. So I'm looking for maybe a March in Milwaukee. Ooh, Milwaukee. <laughs> the good land. The good land. <laughs> El Gantwin for yeah. the good land. Um, but other than that, I'm trying to take some time off of stuff. Yeah, and it's winter time. Yeah, my kids got hockey like four days a week. Deck? Ice. Ooh. Yeah, no no deck anymore. That's that's done for the that's year. That's over. Mm-hmm. He actually he opted out of this season, uh, what with skull fracture oh, from baseball. Yeah. And so he just opted out of the whole year at deck. And uh, but now we're into ice yeah. and was he cleared for that or are you just going? For yeah, it? he was cleared for it. Okay. He was cleared before deck ended, but we just kind of were like, you know what, let's yeah, just keep screw it, hang out. Uh, but yeah, so the holidays coming up. I'm looking forward to just maybe hanging out, playing some video games with the boy, and so, that's about it. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So, how's your uh, potatoes? My potatoes, delicious with a side of meats. With a side of meats. Um, mean potato time. I get yeah. Let's do it today. We're doing uh, the police. The, <laughs> we're doing the police's synchronicity. Synchronicity two. Uh, one I prefer. Oh, okay. I'm an old school kind of guy. Well, is there a one? Because I've only seen Synchronicity 2. There is a one. Because I was looking at that, too, and then I started listening to Synchronicity 1, and I was like, no, thank you. It's not as I good. I couldn't. Why? You know what? I didn't even li- It ruined it so bad for me, I didn't even listen to Synchronicity 2. Oh. Uh, okay. But I don't know if I'm a big fan of The Police. What are some of their more popular um, albums? Or songs, rather. Message in a Bottle? In a bottle. Nah. It all sounds the same, I yeah. think. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of The Police. No. Or Sting. Sting. What did he do after The Police? Um, Became a verb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I didn't listen to a lot of Sting either. No. Um. So, Synchronicity. Which is? What do you got for us, Dave? Give us a Give us a definition to ring this off. Uh, the simultaneous occurrence of events which appear significantly related but have no discernible casual connection. Or, as coined by Carl Jung, uh, synchronicity means a meaningful coincidence. Meaningful coincidence. And see, I kind of, I feel like I have been trying to do this more lately. Trying to find meaning in things that maybe isn't there. Like just being more aware. Yes, at, at like, what is the old uh, luck is where practice and opportunity meet. 
something like that planning an opportunity meet and it's it's just like you have you have to be aware for when things arise so that you can follow that course yeah so um i used to have this thing where i would say like um you set things where you can see it and then when you can see it grab it yeah and so you have to be aware to see it so then you can have the opportunity to grab it. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. This whole synchronicity thing got really woo-woo foofy on me. It's a uh, lot of woo-woo foofy. Yeah. Uh, not to say I'm against that. Because um, it it could also be like serendipitous. Mm-hmm. Did that come up a lot in your research? Uh, Kind of. But also, I mean, a lot of my research was more positive aimed. But I do feel like there is an air of if you're a negative person, you're going to see all the negative sides of synchronicity. Yeah. You know, when you're when you're uh, when you lose your job and then your dog dies and then your wife leaves you right. and you become a country singer. Uh, obviously, you were meant to go that direction because you were seeing all the negative things. Yeah. Are you only. Yeah, it's the things that you're looking for. Yeah. But sometimes the research that I did, it's like um it's more hindsight. Okay. Where things will happen, but then by looking back on them, you're like, oh well, this seems to be connected with that, which seems to be connected with that. Mm-hmm. And I well, I also felt like part of it was so I've been trying to be a little bit more spiritual in that uh just kind of letting the universe guide me, and that's kind of what syn- synchronicity is yeah uh and so with meditating and kind of taking myself out of things and uh kind of letting the universe kind of guide me uh i feel like it's a lot of like just energies yeah you see the energies you're looking for and i feel like that kind of goes with a little bit more of like a buddhist type mentality yeah, where um, I was also doing research, and one of the uh, quotes, I guess, I heard was, um, whenever you're on the right path, the universe kind of winks at you. Mm, yep, I heard a lot of type, that kind of type of stuff, Yeah, too. so then it's like, the reason you're seeing like the number three over and over again is because you were thinking about uh, changing your job, and... Anytime you think about it, then you see the number three. So that has mm-hmm. to be like a sign that's saying, maybe you should do this kind of mm-hmm. deal. Uh, yeah. Something that I, a quote that I had uh, written down was uh, by a Dr. Kirby Surprise, oh, which is a rad name, surprise, right? Surprise. Yeah. Uh, but uh, his quote is uh, he calls synchroni- synchronicity the realization of unity in your own consciousness. And to me, it's like your consciousness is seeing out and feeling within. Okay. So like you, your brain thoughts and things like that, your consciousness within, but then how you perceive external forces that act on you. Yeah. Uh, And so it's like when you're thinking about the number five or three and you're seeing the number three out in the world, it's like how you are connecting yourself to the world. If that makes sense. Okay. By making a, finding the coincidence is making yourself more connected to the world. Yeah. I can see that. Like kind of a game to play with yourself. Yeah. Some people call that masturbation, but (laughs) this is a little different. This is less physical. Uh, I don't know. Is (laughs) is that a game to you? (laughs) Is that a game to you? Uh, but he he uh was this Dr. Kirby surprise was also talking about um different types of measuring things. Okay. Like measurements of probability and time and space and consciousness. All right. So like if if I need to walk to the fridge to grab a drink, you can measure the probability of that because it's so close. But if I need to walk to um let's say if i need to go to like the gas station to get a drink yeah it's less likely for me to do that because it's so much farther away and in a way that's a form of measuring 
Right. Like, what's the probability that you're going to get a drink? Well, if the drink is right at hand, Mm -hmm. it's more probable than if you have to go to the gas station to get it. Yeah. Uh, Which is kind of interesting to say out loud because I'm a big proponent of, like, my kid's always saying, well, what's the chances of that? Or, uh, like, he'll he'll do something stupid and, like, something will go right into place. Like, those videos you see of people tossing balls into... Yeah. Stuff. And like, obviously they're doing it for like hours before they right, get the video. And they just edit the one. Yeah. Yeah. But uh but whenever my kid or something crazy happens and people are like, Well, what's the probability of that? And I'm like, Well, hundred percent because it just happened. Yeah, you did it once <laughs> and it went in there. Yeah. yeah one for one. <laughs> uh but uh yeah, I was I was kind of thinking about that probability of the universe aligning to meet a goal. Right. Um, but like you were saying, it also kind of depends on what you're looking at. Like, um, like you just buy a new car, like a Volvo, Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden everybody's driving a Volvo. Well, what are the chances of that? Probably the same as it was before. It's just that since Volvo is on your brain, you start recognizing that there's all these Volvos out there. Yeah. Uh, like I, yes, uh, cars don't just change all of a sudden. Like yeah. not everybody's going out and buying Volvos. Yeah, like because oh, man. you bought a Volvo. Right, there's just a big uptick in Volvo sales or something. <laughs> yeah, so, oh dang, Dave just bought a Volvo. They must be hot. No shit. But I've also heard that it's um, like a subconscious thing, where maybe like um. There was a story that I heard that I read about where this lady was looking at like court cases, but how the court cases were compiled in the library were pretty haphazardly. Like you could go by like the court, the number, but if you didn't know the number, you couldn't just look up like um, armed robbery cases because it wasn't organized like that. And she was looking and looking and she was trying to find this one court case. I was getting so flustered and then she saw the librarian come in and she was like, I'm going to ask the librarian and she pulled a book out and just like flopped it open and it just happened to open up right to the page of the court case that she needed. Whoa. Yeah. And they said, you know, like, like you said, what are the chances of that? And then people argue like, okay, well, did your subconscious, like maybe before you glossed over it and didn't see it and so your subconscious reached was like this book and then you just i don't know to flop open like that or maybe Mm -hmm. she just flipped it but maybe her subconscious was like this is this is where it is stupid yeah like look right here yeah i feel like i feel like there's like the the next so there's we live in a four-dimensional world yes an x a y a z axis and then time yes I think the next dimension, the fifth dimension, has to be some sort of, like, consciousness or energy-related. Like the observer? Yeah. Like that one? Uh, Where, like, you know, your energies inside of you are getting strong enough to, like, magnetize that court case to your hand. Okay. Uh, I guess that's kind of like um, the, that I, the I Ching which is a book of, um, like, not proverbs, but, like, fortunes. Mm-hmm. And to find, like, which page and which verse you're going to read, you throw, like, three coins. And if they're, like, all heads, it's a straight line. If it's, like, heads, tails, heads, then it's a dashed line. And if it's all tails, it's a blank line. And you do it for so many lines, and then you use that, to find which page and verse you're going to read from. Mm -hmm. And then it's either like, because you're look, you have a certain question already in mind that you can bend the question, the answer to your question, Mm -hmm. or is it some unseen force that made them fall like that to give you the answer that you're, you needed or you're looking for? Yeah. I feel like uh, a lot of it is the same thing. You know, it's all, it's all putting the dots together, maybe just in a different order. Okay. Like, so if, if you say that I bend, 
the question to find the answer that I need. Or you have, you've been the answer to the question you were asking. Yeah. Like a horoscope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that kind of thing is similar to when something happens and it just happens to be the right answer. Well, maybe it's a little bit more physical with, like, the court case you were talking about. Right, where it just happens to be what you were looking for. Yeah. So you're thinking maybe there's a, a spiritual aspect to it or, like, an extra energy? Yeah. Like ESP. Yeah. Or uh, mind bullets. What's that called? <laughs> Telekinesis, Kyle. Telekinesis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I think. Um so kind of going along with that, there was uh, this doctor, J.B. Ryan. Um, Another strong name. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was teaching, and a gambler came in and told him that it's going to sound crazy, but I can affect dice rolls with my mind. And it, uh, Dr. Ryan was a scientist and he was like okay let's test this out okay so he had he had him roll a hundred dice or a uh, roll dice a hundred times statistically seven is the highest rolled number and then it goes oh if you're rolling two dice two dice yeah okay and then um well i guess i don't know i thought he said he kept saying dice but i guess that doesn't mean rolling two dice it could be more well yeah, i mean you could be rolling the same dice over and over again yeah. Uh, because he had the guy uh, roll for sixes. He said, "Think, try to roll sixes. Okay. And uh, he said, statistically, it stood out within that experiment. The amount of times that he rolled sixes? Yes. And then he went and he went. So this guy was a gambler. Right. And then he took the study to um, regular people. And had multiple regular people think of a number and roll the dice. Right. And statistically, the number they were thinking of would roll higher. And then he took it further, and he put gamblers in with preachers, and uh, they rolled, and that didn't have anything to do with it. Whether or not the number was more prevalent. Right. I think it was, so, like, they would have the gambler roll the dice— Okay. And think of a number and the the religious person think of another number but not roll. And the oh. roller would still have more effect on the dice. Okay. And then he built a contraption to roll dice. And I don't remember exactly how he thought of the maybe he was pushing the button. And thinking of a number. Okay. And it and it still statistically rolled higher. Okay. Because I was going to say, like, maybe it's the subconscious where you're like, okay, well, how you flick it or how you roll it, you can maybe manipulate the roll to come out. Yeah, but he like, he said he had... Uh, like a dice roller. Yeah. And, and that also statistically came out the same as when people were doing it. Interesting. Yeah, I thought it was pretty crazy, too. I can never get these rolls on Catan, though. Right, and I can never <laughs> get boxcars and crap. <laughs> Doesn't matter how much the baby needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> baby needs a new <laughs> pair of shoes. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I thought that was crazy. That is crazy. Um, well, I have a kind of story. It's not like that. But um, at lunch, I was doing some research, but then I was going to look up a story that pertained to, like, synchronicity, and I forgot to. And I was listening to Joe Rogan podcast, and he was interviewing Chuck Palahniuk, okay. the guy who wrote Fight Club. Oh, okay. Or I don't know how to say his last name. But I heard he wrote a bunch of other crazy stuff. Yeah, he's got a lot of books out there, but that's the one that I was just, you know... That's what everybody knows, yeah. Everybody knows. And he just happened to tell a story about his dad, where his dad got killed. Mm -hmm. And so Joe Rogan asked him about it, which I think, I don't know if that's 
you ask somebody if they're they're like, oh yeah, my dad got killed. Would you be like, oh how? Well, I mean, you're in the middle of a conversation. I guess makes for good podcasting. Yeah, it's all about lobbing softballs and hitting them back. I guess, but I mean, if it's still like a death of a parent. Yeah, but I mean, it turned out in your favor, it, and in yeah. that, well, it was a probably good podcast, but it I, was the it was the softball you needed hit. Right, and it was the story where um, at, at least I'm assuming that's where this is going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah don't want to make assumptions. Well, like the story he was told is um. Cause he set it all up where when his dad was like five or he was, he was young and his dad, his dad's dad, uh, went crazy and stalked through the house trying to find Chuck's dad. Mm -hmm. He didn't say names. So it's a lot of dad and dad's (laughs) dad. And his first memory is him hiding under a bed and listening to his dad's like boots walk around the house while he's calling his name with a rifle. Oh. And then the dad ended up killing his mom Oof. and himself. And um, so then, like, fast forward, uh, Chuck's dad um, was on this dating site, but I think it was more like a, like a newspaper. And the top of the like uh i don't know what you call that the title or the the title of the paper personal ad oh okay it was like kiss a mat and i guess that's some kind of word (laughs) (laughs) well it it was like for like i don't know i can't remember what it meant if it was like some kind of serendipity or like um luck or something okay and so that's like was a title and it ended up being this lady and um his dad was talking with her and they went out with a couple dates but the lady was a counselor in a prison Mm -hmm. and she ended up falling in love before she met the dad fell in love with a prisoner and then used her skills to help him like hey you need to apply for this and do this uh parole hearing or like uh whatever it's called when you try to fight your yeah a plea yeah a plea yeah bargain or plea dealer or, where are you like uh i'm bad with court lingo prosecute when they're like you're guilty but you're like we're going to uh try to like make amends or like try to fight it or like get it overturned mm, overturned a good is a good one yeah <laughs> objection <laughs> overruled <laughs> um but anyway she was able to help him get out of jail okay and then they got married but then um i think he was abusive mm. and so then that on top of his parole he was going to go back to jail and she was like getting ready for the court case before you know for the guy and the guy was like, well, if I ever catch you with another guy, I'm killing you and the dude. And so she was scared. And so Chuck's dad was like, uh, he lived out in the mountains on a farm. And he's like, well, you can come up to my farmhouse and hide out, quote unquote, until the trial. So that way, you know, you don't have to worry about this guy. And so then when Chuck's dad is like driving down the mountain, this boulder had come loose oh. and uh, got lodged in the middle of the road. So his dad, like, had to use, like, a, you know, just a lever, 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 and just, like, work this boulder off the road. Physics. And, yeah, but it took him, like, most of the day. And then he um, wrote, like, carved on the boulder, like, that kiss him at. Okay. Because he wanted to name it, and he was, like, going to show her, like, look, this is, like, the boulder I moved on the day that I came to get you up up to the place for, like however long because he like cleaned the house and like got food and they were like he was doing it all upright so they mm-hmm. could have a little like getaway up there yeah but then after because it took so long to move the boulder by the time he got there um the ex-husband showed up <laughs> and shot him his dad yeah and oh, the no. chick i think oh no yeah and they ran into the house and like locked themselves in and the dude set the house on fire. Oh, no. Yeah. That's a good way to get people out of a house, though. But they ended up uh, being in the house. 
and like while well, it burnt down and collapsed oh. on them. Yeah, in the in the root cellar or something. Well, they were like on the first floor. Okay. And the coroner said they like the way his dad was shot, he got hit through the diaphragm. So every time he would breathe out, uh, under the between the lungs and the diaphragm would get filled with air. Okay. So he slowly like suffocated over like twenty minutes. Oh no. And uh, the reason the they were able to tell like his body was preserved is like as the house was collapsing, like a mattress from the second story fell on top of their bodies and like insulated them from the blaze. And so he was like saying how it was very synchronicit, synchronicit, I guess, um, that his first memory was hiding under a bed from a guy that wanted to shoot him, but then ended up killing his mom, which would be like the woman figure or like, you know how they always say that like girls go after their, they date people like their dads. Well, he felt that his dad was always trying to find like a mom figure because he never had Mm -hmm. that because she got killed. And then it turns out his life ends by a guy who actually finally shoots him and the mom figure and they're found under a bed where they quote unquote like hid from the fire oh or were God. protected from the fire. That's crazy. Yeah. Let's see if I have one of the, have a story like that. Uh I don't know how close this one is to that. But Well, a short one. Uh, we may have talked about this one. Which one? Uh, the Archduke Ferdinand. Uh, I see the guy that got shot to start World War One. Yeah. Okay. How he... Uh, so, like, a shorter-term come-around where uh, he was in whatever country it was. I don't know. But um, he was in some sort of parade. Yeah. And these radicals had placed a bomb in the road. Well, the bomb didn't go off in time, and it blew up the car behind him. Okay. So the driver of Archduke Ferdinand's car uh, drove, like, a getaway route, but I think he changed the route. Uh, He didn't take the the right route. Maybe there was, like, cars or something or too many people in the direction he was supposed to go. So the driver took a different way. Well, they ended up getting backtracked or something, and, and they stopped... And one of the assassination, the assassins, uh, who uh, the radicals that were planning it, he had run and then went and grabbed a sandwich, I guess. Yeah. And he came out of the sandwich shop, and there's the guy he wanted to kill. So Uh-oh. he t- pulls out a gun and kills him. <laughs> so the guy just ended up in front of him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like served him up on a silver platter. Oh, that's crazy. But yeah, like to have missed the attempt. Right. The driver was supposed to go a certain way, but didn't. And then to end up where one of the assassins were. Right. As he's walking out of the sandwich yeah, shop. Yeah, it sounds like it, World War One was meant to be. Maybe. It was <laughs> faded. Yeah. Um, But something a little bit longer is... uh, So Edgar Allan Poe from Dead Poets. Yeah. I don't know if he was... Was he in there? Yeah, they had a drink. It was like a, yeah, it was like a black coffee. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So Edgar Allan Poe, uh, most known for his poetry, he only ever wrote one novel. Really? Um, It was called The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym, P-Y-M-E, or P-Y-M. It was about um, a whaling ship called the Grampus. Okay. And it was exploring Antarctic regions when they hit a storm. And they had a mutiny, like, really close together. Okay. Because of the storm, or? Yes. Okay. Uh, The ship's crew got through the mutiny with the captain still in charge. One of the mutineers, whose name was Richard Parker, was spared from being killed because of the mutiny. Yeah. You know, you throw those guys overboard or whatever you do when you're on a ship. Um, He was spared because they needed his expertise to sail the boat. Okay, so the the mutiny didn't go through. Right, yes. It was a failed mutiny. Gotcha. Uh, So as they're sailing back to wherever they needed to go, 
Richard Parker uh, realizes that they don't have enough food. Right. And everybody starts realizing they don't have enough food. They hold out as long as they can. Uh, they end up drawing straws to see who was gonna die, who's gonna get killed. Yes, and I didn't read the the book. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure they ate him. Yeah, it sounds so, like a Poe-ish kind of thing. Yeah, right. So not only do you have one less mouth to feed, that guy is feeding the yes. mouse that need fed. Well, that was written in 1838. All right. In 1884, four men from England, so about, like about 50, 50 years. years later. Yeah. Uh, four men from England were hired to per- pick up a yacht from Australia and sail it to England. As they were sailing, they ran into a storm. Yeah. And uh, the boat started to sink. Oh, The no. yacht started to sink. In their escape, they grabbed like food and navigation supplies. Well, they accidentally grabbed like half food, half not food, uh, whatever it would look like. I don't know what it would exactly like some be. Like barrels, but some of it was not food. So, I don't know, soap or something. I don't know. Bunch of rum. <laughs> not a bad thing, though. Right. Uh, but so eight days of floating in the ocean, their supplies started running low. Uh, and one of the crew was a young man. Uh, the rest of the crew were three established sailors and they all had families and stuff. Right. The rations were running low. They were all starting to starve. Uh, the younger man started to get ill. He was drinking seawater at night. Oh yeah. And you can't do that. No. It makes you go crazy. Yeah. And, uh, so the other men decided to kill him to survive and his name was Richard Parker. Oh Yeah kind of a crazy coincidence that is crazy uh the storm having to kill somebody and cam the potential cannibalism yeah uh all wrapped up in one story that is kind of crazy um but sometimes like names can be pretty common Mm -hmm. um i should have wrote it down but they were like these three writers and they brainstormed to come up with a story. And it was like, um, they're like, oh, well, let's say that there's um, homeless people living in Hyde Park. But one of them is actually um, a physicist from Poland. And then they gave a name. Mm-hmm. I should have wrote it down. But it is a very Polish name that they gave this fictional scientist. And then, like, two weeks later, they're reading in the paper, and there was this homeless guy found wandering around in Hyde Park that had the same name. Whoa. Yeah, that happened to be, like, a physicist. Yeah, and that had the same name as the name that they made up for this Polish... Yeah. Yeah. I guess saying saying something like that, I mean, if you're going for a Polish name, and Richard Parker you're, is kind of, like, yeah. not a... I got a good one with names, though. Yeah. Uh... Apparently, after Kennedy was shot, John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. Okay, not uh, not the Bobby, not Bobby, not Bobby Kennedy, yeah. or the Kennedy from MTV. No, is he shot? It was a her. Oh, she was shot. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> so I was making sure it wasn't that old VJ. <laughs> you were really, you were really worried. Yeah, I was really reaching. Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy. After Kennedy was shot, there was a. It has it has been from that long, uh, and this I guess pops up often on social media. Yeah, but how their lives were really similar, or like facts about them are super similar. Right. Uh, so there's seven letters in each of their names, okay. Kennedy and Lincoln. Yeah. Um, they were both the second born child of their family. Oh, I didn't know that one. Uh. They both suffered by genetic diseases. I don't remember. I they said it. I didn't remember what it was. All right. uh, which that one's not as as uh, crazy. Uh, these next ones are. I'm gonna burn through them really quick. Okay, go for just it. because they're they're all kind of similar. Like uh, John Wilkes Booth and Lee Harvey Oswald. They both use three names. Yep, th- those are ones. Uh, but really quick, uh, ele- they were both elected into Congress in a year that ended with 46. 
and so this is Lincoln was 1800s, Kennedy was 1900s, 1846 and 1946. 46. Both presidents were runners up for the party's nomination for VP in the year ending in 56. Okay. And both were elected to presidency in a year ended in 60. Uh, so that all kind of makes sense to me with like how a term would go. Yeah. Um, because elections only happen in certain terms. Right. Every four years. Um, they both married women in their, who were oh, in their twenties. Oh, they both married women. <laughs> <laughs> they both married women who uh, were in their twenties while they were in their thirties. Okay. Uh, both lost sons while living in the White House. That I was kind of a crazy yeah, I didn't one. I know that one. Uh, both sons had 21 letters in their names, seven in each name. Uh, William Wallace Lincoln, Patrick Bouvier Kennedy. Bouvier. 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 Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, both assassinators were known by all three names, John Wilkes Booth and Lee Harvey Oswald. Uh, assassinators each have 15 letters in their names. Ooh. That's kind of a strange one. Yeah. Oh, here was a good one. Lincoln was shot at Ford's Theater. Oh, yeah. Kennedy was shot in, in a, a Ford, Ford Lincoln. Oh, Ford Lincoln. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what? I think that was all of them. Um, yeah. There, there was more on this list. Yeah, it was like um, a lot of them. Oswald shot Kennedy from a book depository and then ran to a theater. Um, Lincoln was shot in a theater and Booth was found in a book store or a uh, book something. It was, it was warehouse and oh, theater. Okay. But um, John Wilkes Booth was found more like in a barn. Yeah. Uh, as And and I mean, it's kind of like a an old-timey warehouse. You keep stuff in it. Right. But that, that one's kind of a stretch. There were a few on the list that were actually proven to be false, so I didn't include those. Okay. But that was some name stuff that was kind of weird. That is kind of weird. Um, there was another story I heard about... Um, well, yet again, I didn't write down the names because they were, like, English professors. Like, even if I said their names, it wouldn't matter to the mm -hmm. story. But there was a guy who was going... It was, Back in Paris, he was going to college, and his roommate was from England, and he introduced him to plum pudding, mm -hmm. which was new. Like, they didn't have that in Paris at the time. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, this is really good. And then later in life, he's walking down the street of Paris, and he walks by this bakery, and he notices there's plum pudding in the window. And he goes in there to see if he can buy it, and they're like, no, this was special made. It's on hold for... And it happened to be his roommate from college. Oh. And he's like, oh, wow, that's crazy. And he ended up waiting around. And then, like, they shared the pudding together. Oh, that's cool. And then the same guy was at a party and, like, later on in life. And they're like, oh, we have this treat. We're going to have plum pudding. And he's like, you know, every time I have pl plum pudding, such and such is always around. And then not any sooner that he says that, there's a <laughs> knock on the door. And it's his old roommate from college <laughs> that happened to be going to a party in the building, but then got the doors mixed up and ended up knocking on that door. Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, well, you did kind of a synchronicity thing with me. Yeah. You're always experimenting on me, Dave, and I'm not sure how I feel about this. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Evil scientist over here. Yes. Uh, so a, a week ago... On Monday, yeah, you had told me fish and fur, fish and fur, and uh, I well, I was kind of I've been thinking about it a lot. All right, and I think I've been seeing some things like fur. I have a bunch of cats, yeah. the little the little podcast cats, right? Uh, if you ever hear the bells, um, which might be a lot this episode. <laughs> yeah, we were eating these baked treats and they were all over the place, right? Uh, and then fish. Well, my wife is a pescatarian. So we do eat a lot of fish. Yeah. Uh, tilapia, tuna, stuff like that. You do have a fish laying on your well, kitchen that, table right now. That fish, it's a, a taxidermy mount marlin. Yeah. I got that fish the Sunday before you asked me. Okay. Or told me about fish and fish, fur. Yeah. And then the Tuesday after that, uh, so Sunday, I got the fish. Right. Tuesday, you hit me with the fish and fur. And... Or 
Monday with fishing for <laughs> Tuesday. Sunday, I, I picked up that taxidermy fish. Okay. Monday, you hit me with the fish and fur. And Tuesday, uh, me and my wife were going to my son's hockey game. It's a nice rink. It's cold. Right. She brings this fur jacket to repair at the hockey rink. Oh, really? Yeah, so it was three days in a row hitting the fish and fur hard. Right. I thought, uh, I can't explain it. No. But, but this... it was... It's pretty interesting. Yeah, pretty fairly accurate with my life. Yeah. Um, I had one where on Friday I listened to a podcast that had Jewel on it, and she was talking about the, her life. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to Goodwill, and they had – I was, like, going through, and they had at least five Jewel CDs. Oh, my God. Yes, and they had a Christmas CD that I've <laughs> never – Knew that she put out a Christmas CD. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jewel put out a Christmas CD. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, what do you think I meant? I don't know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so I ended up buying that actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Was it good? I have not listened to it. Oh, okay. It's not Christmas yet, <laughs> but it's around the corner. Right around the corner. Uh, yeah. It was, this secretity stuff is is weird to me. Yeah, and I think it's like it's just being mindful. Mm -hmm. Because then you can see the stuff more. Because I'm sure there's things in life that go on, you know, that have coincidences that you don't notice. Mm -hmm. But when you're like more mindful about it, then you can start to see how things are kind of linked sometimes. Yeah, and I was I was doing this research, and I was wondering how this may have affected before science. You know, before we knew. Um, like, I guess something people need is to eat. Right. How, how many times did people in the past see activity of animals? Right. Thinking it was just a coincidence until they started putting things together. Yeah. You know, uh, how synchronicities like that would, would shape how we live our lives now. Right. Um, I kind of wrote down something about that where it's like, like an evolutionary, mm. um, trait. Yeah. To be inclined to see patterns mm. in situations. Yeah. Cause like what I wrote down is like, okay, so it would start off slow, but then you would start to see patterns like, okay, if the leaf is shaped like this, that means that I can eat these berries mm -hmm. and these bear, these bushes grow under, these trees so if i see these trees i'm going to find these berries so then you look at the pattern like okay a white oak tree then i can find this berry then i can or find this bush then i can find this berry mm -hmm. so oh, and this white oak tree always seems to be halfway up hills and so i just if i find a hill i look halfway up it and find that white oak tree find that bush eat them berries yeah so then we're kind of our evolutionary our lizard brains mm -hmm. are wired to see patterns like that yeah, where our, maybe like our more our modern cat brains. Yeah, our more <laughs> modern brains maybe gloss over that, but yet our subconscious, if you want to call it that, sees those patterns, mm -hmm. and then yeah, it maybe if you're not paying attention, they'll bring it to the forefront. Mm -hmm. And and I was also wondering, I was trying to look it up, but I couldn't find a lot of information. I was looking up feng shui, feng shui, because like I was saying earlier in the podcast. uh I feel like this has got to be some sort of like workings of an energy, which, okay. which is what your, your brain is all electrical energy, right? It just sparks off in different ways to do different things. Yeah. Um, and so like they say feng shui is all about energies. Uh, a lot of what they do is like mountain energy and water energy. Um, now of course we don't have a lot of mountains like where we are, but, uh, we have water energy. Yeah, we have bluffs. Yeah, bluffs. Uh, but I wonder how, like, the Earth's energies affects us in that way as well. Yeah. Uh, and I was trying to find, like, why feng shui works the way it does. But all I found was, like, how to set things up in feng shui. Okay. And I didn't really look at it too far. I was too busy researching Lincoln and stuff. So. Oh, uh, all right. No, but that makes sense because, like... Uh, people that live closer to water are generally more mellow. 
like mm-hmm. people that live along the coast, uh, people that live along the river. Yeah, those river rats are just content with being there. Yeah, it's just like mellow. And mm-hmm. I think it has to do with maybe that you know that because of water, you realize that things aren't a constant. Mm-hmm. So then you don't worry as much because you're like, this will pass too, maybe. Yeah, with like the rising of the tides and stuff. Yeah, or like the flowing of the river. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. It's all very interesting. Got any? Thing else on that i do i have a bunch more uh, do we want to keep going do you have a bunch more i have uh the titanic okay so oh, yeah that's the, a good one yeah the titanic the un- unsinkable ship yes sank uh oh did spoilers <laughs> spoilers but did uh leonardo dicaprio survive uh well in real life he did but they oh. had to make the movie interesting so oh okay kate, kate blanchett, <laughs> blanchett sold him out <laughs> uh so two people could fit on the raft, Rose. <laughs> Have you seen that those pictures of kids who like built the size of the Yeah. And they're like they're showing cars. how to yeah, sit on the raft. Uh so uh this unsinkable ship, they put a ton of engineering and hundred and sixty well, I don't remember what the pri- the cost was then, but if it was in current money, it was hundred and sixty six million dollars to build this boat it took 26 months okay so that's how much they had invested into this it's a lot yeah um before setting sail there was some sort of hot fire burning in this in the boat somewhere well it was it was right where the iceberg hit it yeah but i remember seeing pictures of that where they show like there's a dark spot where mm -hmm. they're like there was yeah some kind of fire and they think it might have weakened the hole or yeah. something. Uh, yeah, it was burning for like three weeks. And I was like, there's no way. Like somebody would have caught it. But there was management knew about the fire. And they must have had like paperwork or something. Um, and also when they loaded the ship with passengers, they turned the marks away from the docks. So yeah, the yeah, passengers so wouldn't be worried. Yeah. Uh, so that was a pretty weird coincidence and it just happened to be in the spot where the iceberg hit yeah um to give you an idea they made sure to have 1500 bottles of wine twenty thousand bottles of beer eight thousand cigars but there was only one set of binoculars (laughs) oh yeah uh and so when the titanic set sail there wasn't any um sonar equipment right so what boats would do would they would have tr- people trained with binoculars looking out for obstacles yes well they only had one pair of binoculars on this boat wasn't it locked up on that day yep it was locked up in a room the only person that had the key was the second officer and he was replaced at the last minute and by the time they realized that he had the key and they were out at they were out at sea three uh, days later okay so they were, oh, so they didn't have access to them. No. Okay, I thought maybe just on that night they were locked up, but no, they they had they was in some. So they didn't have them room. for the whole journey. Yeah. Uh, the boat was falling behind schedule, and they wanted this whole trip to go off without a hitch. Yeah. So as they were traveling that day, they were going faster than the ship was designed to go. Right. They were really pushing it. Yeah. Um, to account for all the passengers, the Titanic needed 60 lifeboats. Yeah. The engineer designed it for 48, but it didn't even look, it didn't look good. So they didn't even put that many on. They only used 20 lifeboats Jeez. so they could get a third of the people off. Uh, lifeboat drills were never done on the Titanic. Yeah. Uh, and they were scheduled to happen that day, but they were canceled by the captain. Oh. For some reason. Yeah, he's like, nah, we're having fun. Yeah. Uh, it took, on average, uh, launching lifeboats take takes a crew 10 minutes. Yeah. So they think that since they never did these drills, that's why it took up to 30 minutes. Because they were unfamiliar with what yeah. was going on. Um, and with 
everybody not knowing what was going on, the first batch of lifeboats left half empty. Yeah. Um. Also, this I thought this was pretty ironic, but uh, when the ti- when the Titanic was sinking, they shot signal flares in the air. Yeah. And there was a boat, uh, the Californian, who was in the same area at the same time. But there's a uh, light refraction off of the cold water areas yeah. uh, in that area of um, the world. So when they were seeing these signal flares go off, they thought it was just light reflection off the water. So it was like the wrong place at the wrong time type of thing. Right. Uh, they, were, they didn't think it was a real flare. Okay. And all those things stacked up to sink this ship yeah. and kill all these people. Just tons of people. Yeah. And it, to me, that sounds an awful lot like uh, the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand and where kind of meant to be. Yeah, everything lined up. There was also a book that was written, I want to say, 10 to 50 years before that. But it was called um, The Titan. And it was about the biggest ship ever made. And in the book, it was claimed to be unsinkable. And in the book, it also was sank by an iceberg. Whoa, no way. Yes. And um, how how long further is at least 10 years before the Titanic. And um, it also didn't have enough life rafts. (laughs) And I think it was so many miles off Greenland or Iceland. And it just so happens that where the Titanic sank was within a mile of oh my God. where that sank in the book. Well, that sounds like that Edgar Allan Poe story. Yeah, I mean, I don't have all the... But there's a lot more similarities yeah. than that. Because I think it was also in the book, the engineer designed it with the least amount of lifeboats legally uh, required. Yeah, the what I read about that lifeboats thing is... um. The lifeboats have nothing to do with passengers. It's about tonnage of the boat. Okay. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what that means, but like 20 lifeboats was actually legal. Okay. Even though it only would have held a third of the uh, passengers. Right. But I think tonnage when it comes to boats is how much it can carry. Right. Yeah. Well, and and it seems like carrying people was not such... A common thing for boats yeah crazy yeah that was the last thing i had that's the last thing you i had? think i said i had a lot more but i didn't yeah <laughs> yeah that's synchronicity that is synchronicity i feel like well we were looking for synchronicity in stories so that would explain why all those stories kind of wrapped up at the end i felt like that what do you mean uh well they all came together at the end yeah how how the titanic felt like it meant to be like Archduke Ferdinand yeah. and and the book being written before the happening was kind of like the right. Poe. Yeah. Uh, but, His book. Yeah. But maybe I'm just looking for things to connect the dots. But it's also one of those things where if it was written before, it's the hindsight mm-hmm. where that you can connect dots a lot easier than you can trying to connect dots to the future. Oh, yeah, I guess... So you're saying, like, if, if I were to have something crazy happen to me, I could probably go find a book that was about that. Yeah, or if you had something crazy happen to you, you could look back into your past and be like, oh, well, that's kind of like this, or mm. it's kind of like... With a mattress thing, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Like, it, it you can find, yeah, find, a, like, a, a loop or mm-hmm. a circle. Yeah. Yeah, synchronicity. Yeah, it was cool. I had fun looking at this one. Yeah, it was fun. It's some interesting thought experiments. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really uh, in the mood to meditate and kind of clear my mind and, and look for stuff that presents itself. Yeah, and it's also, yeah, makes you want to be more present and aware of yeah. your surroundings. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I guess that's all I got, Dave. How about you? Yeah, that's all I have from the Blue Ribbon Lounge. Blue Ribbon Lounge, hit us up, uh, blueribbonlounge.com, Blue Ribbon Lounge at Mo- Blue Ribbon Lounge Moline at gmail.com. All right. Uh, check out Abernathy's. They got stickers. Yeah. Check out Matt Nicky on Instagram. Yeah. I want to 
I took a picture of Dave, but I don't think he noticed. So I hope you did not. I did. <laughs> Surely I did <laughs> okay. not. Okay. Uh, but you guys be good to yourselves. Yeah. So remember, all your base are belong to us. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. See ya. Stop.
Oh no, your headphones are on. <laughs> yes.